today we're going to talk about what Canon is doing in 2020. Let's get right into it. You're a beautiful person and you're a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first one to tell you that. All right, thank you for joining me in this video. The best way you can support this channel is by subscribing. And I've had a lot of cool subscribers join uh, from all over the world. So shout out to subscriber Meet Singh. He left a comment and he said, hey, uh, what's up from India? I love that. Take a minute and leave a comment and just give a shout out to your part of the country or globe, wherever you're from. I think that'd be a super cool way to build community on this channel. All right. so. Uh, in 2020, Canon has plans that are, have been announced and we're gonna talk about what they are. I'm not really that guy to give technical predictions about where Canon is going, but I do care and I know you care and a lot of you are wondering, should I purchase the EOS R or, or wait for something else? And so I'm gonna talk about it and do my best to give you the information that's out there, what we do know. So um, I appreciate if you would uh, bear with me and wait to all the way to the end and see what what's um, supposed to happen. So let me walk back in time and share for a few seconds about my journey to buy the Canon EOS R. It was about a year ago when I had the good fortune to attend CES in Las Vegas. Huge convention, like 180,000 people. If you haven't been, it's hard to conceptualize, but the Nikon and Sony areas were almost like three ring circuses. They had various booths and areas and stages with nonstop presentations and professional development from world-class photographers and brand ambassadors who were sharing their work and perspectives. However, I went over to Canon's booth. It was like crickets in comparison. I was very underwhelmed by the innovation and what they were offering. It was like nothing was happening over there. I left favoring Nikon, especially after meeting Matthew Jordan Smith and talking to him as he worked in the Intel booth taking portraits, demonstrating the tethered connection and processing from Intel. Um, I left infatuated with Nikon and was looking into Z6 and the Z7 as the mirrorless systems I might invest in in 2019. However, 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 I met up with my photography instructor, Nick Carver. Check out his YouTube channel up here somewhere. And um, he thought I should go try the Canon EOS R out in a store, gets hands on, um, or at the Canon factory service center in Costa Mesa. Um, I went to Best Buy, had a terrible experience. The um, salesperson couldn't help me. They didn't know the basic camera functions. Then I went to the Canon factory service center and had a great experience. And I knew immediately Nick Carver's advice was true. He said, the camera that makes you want to go out and shoot is the right camera to invest in. I already owned EF lenses. I was comfortable with the menu system from Canon, but Nick Carver's advice really helped me. And that simple advice led me to have a great 2019. I shot sports, wedding photography, food and cocktail photography, car photography, event photography, portraits, and the EOS R was amazing. I'll link to some of those videos up here. And in fact, I just bought my second EOS R uh, for two shooter situations for some documentary filmmaking my wife and I are doing. On the cusp of several new R line cameras, what do these new models from Canon make sense? Or what do they mean to me? Let's look at what they are. First, And so my options are these. The Canon EOS RM, it's an unofficial name. Apparently the body we're gonna see is even more affordable than the EOS RP. The RP usually sells for 1,000, so this is gonna be less than that. The next thing we have is high resolution EOS RS is gonna be announced in February at the, around the CP Plus convention. The other camera is still kind of a mystery, but it might be an EOS R Mark II or kind of a sports speed body with lower mega, megapixel sensor and aimed at the A7 line, A7S line from Sony. And they're predicting they're not gonna get an R line equivalent to the 1DX because Canon just came out with that and they're probably gonna let that sit for a while. So they say in 2020, don't expect the 1DX equivalent. I've already invested in two R's. I'm not going to get a lower uh, price body. Um, the high resolution EOS R is probably not an option for me either. Um, the higher the number of megapixels doesn't necessarily mean better performance all the way around. Certainly not in low light. So the idea is the number of pixels that fit on the sensors. So sometimes the number of 
pixels you jam in there means the pixels are smaller and that means they do worse in low light. Um, something like the EOS R Mark II with the high frames per second wouldn't matter to me either because I don't do sports photography. My product or uh, portrait photography doesn't demand 16 frames per second. My take is sit tight, be happy, and create. My take, that's what you should be looking out for. Again, the 1DX Mark III is coming out soon. And uh, what are you looking forward to? Uh, remember I said leave a comment, drop a, a What kind of camera are you looking for? Or what are you using now? For me, there's an EOS Again, take a minute to subscribe. I thank you so much. I'm really excited about the growth of the channel and the community. Bit of an announcement. I'll, I'll do maybe a, another YouTube video about this, but I started a photography podcast. So if you watch all the way to the end of the video, then you're going to get a special announcement. And it's Photo Stitcher. It's on uh, Google Play Podcast, iTunes, Apple Podcast. And so I do a video podcast on that's where I rant and rave and cover a lot of content that I um, don't cover in my videos. So if you watch all the way to the end, you got that special announcement. Watch all the way to the end, and I'll share a special announcement with you. Thanks for joining. Peace.